Siblings squabbles happen in every home, but the changes to family life in recent months can lead to hot tempers, irritability and some significant tensions between brothers and sisters. But our relationships with our siblings are amongst the most important and long-lasting relationships in our lives. And when things go pear-shaped and siblings are in conflict, it can be extremely stressful for everyone. Luckily, parenting and family psychology expert and founder of the Triple P Positive Parenting Program, Professor Matt Sanders, is here to answer your questions and give you some practical strategies to avoid sibling conflict and help your children communicate positively, share and be kind to each other. Oh, the boys are okay in the morning but they're fighting a lot more than usual. I think they're bored with each other's company. We run out of ideas. Our youngest just teases his sister all the time. It's worse, we're all home so much. It always blows up and ends in tears. I just don't know what to do anymore. Well, our kids usually get along pretty well, but since lockdown, they've been fighting non-stop. I just hate it when the kids are at each other all the time. There's no peace. Sibling relationships are really important to parents. Our relationships with siblings are amongst the longest relationships we're going to have in our life. And they are related to how well we get on with others and indeed how well we do in life. So when parents see their kids in conflict, teasing, provoking each other, being nasty, using put downs, arguing, fighting over things, and at times becoming even aggressive towards each other, it causes a lot of upset for a lot of parents because they'd really like their kids to get on well with each other. So we need to ask the question, well, why does it happen? Why are kids in so much conflict so often? Well, some of it can be attributed to children being jealous and being in competition for scarce resources of parental attention and time. Kids can feel that they're really not getting the same amount of attention from us as adults. They may have difficulty saying what they want and may not know ways to get attention or to start a game with a brother or sister. So what do they do? They irritate them. They start a fight. Or they may have difficulty in managing their emotions. So when they're feeling frustrated that they're being left out and not included and they want to be part of something, what do they do? They can start to lash out. When we ask the question of why is sibling conflict more likely to be happening right now, I think the important thing to remember is that with children spending so much more time at home than usual, with not the usual distractions and extracurricular activities, they're actually spending a lot more time in the company of their siblings and therefore there's more opportunities for conflict. Well, we might say there's also more opportunities for kids to be pleasant and uh, cooperative and nice to each other. That's true. But kids are also dealing with a lot of stress at the moment, just like we are as parents. They've had to cope with many changes to their school routines, to how they contact and interact with friends, and dealing with the impact of the coronavirus on the world and, and their futures, a lot of kids are a bit worried about this. And like us, stress can mean we can be more irritable and have a shorter fuse than normal. So when we think about trying to keep things calm, perhaps the place to start is to just ask the question of, how we ourselves are communicating with our kids within the family situation. Are we setting the kind of good example that we would like by speaking calmly and quietly and respectfully to children? Are we showing the kindness we'd like them to show by, for example, letting another person have a go first? It's also important to think about how you react to sibling conflict. Are we in a situation of just sort of stepping in and taking over and or giving lots of soothing and calming attention so that kids learn to rely on us as a referee to save the day? Well, perhaps we're dealing with it by becoming irritated. We explode and we wade into their arguments. Perhaps neither of these approaches is a good idea. Children learn a lot by watching us. So if we're critical, if we're demanding or argue a lot or fight a lot ourselves, they're more likely to do the same. And finally, just think about whether you actually have clear rules and expectations about things like sharing and turn-taking and are very clear 
in the line you draw between play and hurting someone else. My girls are getting into the habit of teasing each other and pretend put downs. Sometimes I don't even know if they pretend, but I do know that it hurts when you're on the receiving end, even if it's meant to be just in fun. I don't have any issue with a bit of rough and tumble, but my partner thinks that I'm encouraging aggression. She's worried our boys are fighting too much now that they're together a lot more. Sometimes I think the kids just start a fight to get some attention from us. My younger one actually got angry saying that I have no time for him. It's important to make sure children know what you expect from them. So the idea of having some clear, specific ground rules like be gentle, share and take turns, keep your hands and feet to yourself, use a pleasant voice. These are not unreasonable things to be asking of children. Set children up to cooperate rather than to compete. You can intentionally set up activities that enable them to practice things like turn taking, things like board games or computer games with two or more players. Then make sure you praise and encourage kids when they do play nicely with each other. So try to avoid always coming to the rescue when things are getting out of hand. Get in and give your attention early when they're doing the right thing. Catch them doing the right thing. Be fair and don't play favourites. Try not to compare kids with each other. They all have their unique personalities and talents and successes in life. Let each child know they're important to you and special in their own way. You can help children learn to work with each other. Teach your children positive ways to get attention from each other and to ask each other for something in a pleasant voice, making sharing, turn-taking and caring behaviour a priority in the family. Help your children learn to solve problems together. This might mean brainstorming some ways of handling a difficult situation, which will inevitably involve some negotiation, some compromise and learning about fairness like setting a time limit for having a turn, and the person who goes last perhaps has the longest go, or the person who cuts the cake doesn't take the first piece. You'll see some pretty accurate measurements taking place when this occurs. My 16-year-old son is angry about having to stay home, and he's picking lots of fights with his younger siblings. I feel like I have to intervene all the time. I really don't know how to defuse all these fights. I shouldn't have to. They should know better by now. The kids don't know how to share. The number of fights they have over that stupid phone or tablet is distressing. One of the main aims in dealing with sibling conflict is to try to be as fair as you can. It doesn't really matter who started it. It often takes more than one to start a fight or an argument. So try not to give always into the younger child by letting them have what they want. It's important to treat each child equally to avoid rivalry between them. Sometimes you will need to impose a consequence like removing a toy or activity that the children are fighting over. And often just for a few minutes and then you can bring it back so the kids have a chance to practice the skills that they need to learn, which is sharing and turn-taking. And of course, when they do the right thing, offer them praise and encouragement. In other words, catch them doing the right thing. It's not a good idea to be rough with your child, to show them how it feels when they're being rough with their sibling. This will only confuse them, and it actually demonstrates to them the opposite of what you want them to learn. Sibling relationships are where we first learn conflict resolution skills. And brothers and sisters can be our lifelong friends. So we want to encourage good relationships right from the beginning. But remember, dangerous fights need to be stopped immediately. Separate the kids until they've calmed down. And then as soon as possible, have a family discussion. But perhaps at a later time to talk about how violence is never okay and to discuss ways the situation could have been resolved so it turns into a win-win situation for everyone. It's important to remember that children need to practice some of these skills of requesting from their sibling having a turn. And those skills can actually be practiced immediately after you detect 
things going wrong so that they've got a chance to learn to correct themselves and to engage in the appropriate behaviour right at the time that it means the most. To recap on these ideas for avoiding and diffusing sibling squabbles, here are some key things to remember. Tip number one, set a good example by speaking calmly and politely yourself. Tip number two, make sure your children know what you expect. So have some very clear ground rules and limits about what is okay and what isn't. Tip number three, help them learn to ask nicely, share and take turns and solve problems together. And tip number four, deal with any conflict fairly. Stay calm, treat all children the same and look for opportunities to encourage them for sharing, taking turns, compromising and being kind to each other. Thanks for listening to Parenting in a Pandemic. Make sure you like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to leave a review. It'll help others to find this series. You can find free COVID-19 Parenting in a Pandemic resources in the episode show notes to help you on this journey.